Over a thousand people have been killed in this conflict and as the UN Secretary uh, General there said, most of them are women and children. Will Israel now pause, stop and change its rule of engagement? Uh, every death is a tragedy. In fact, it, it, it's not true, by the way, that the majority are women and children. The, the majority, as far as the figures that we've seen, some 80% are actually men of fighting age. But obviously, every death, every woman, every child, every individual who's not a militant, it's an absolute tragedy. It's a, really, it's a double tragedy. We're, 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 we're sad because of the loss of life. But we're also sad because, unfortunately, Gaza in the hold, is in the hold of a terrorist organization, Hamas, which is literally putting these people in the front line. But if we look at uh, the images that we've been seeing uh, of that UN shelter in Beit Hanun that was targeted, the majority of them were children. The fact is, if you look at the UN just over the last couple of weeks, we've had two cases where the UN has admitted that UN schools have actually been used as storehouses for missiles, for rockets and missiles. And when you think about what that means, you have a terrorist organization that is placing within schools, we've seen houses, houses where civilians and children are, are booby-trapped. One of the most fundamental humanitarian principles is let us try and leave civilians out of the equation. Unfortunately, you know, when every democracy thinks that the goal of a military is to protect their civilians, we have Hamas that thinks that the goal of civilians is to protect their weapons. Indeed, but that particular school, the UN has said, and Ban Ki-moon has just said, was full of uh, civilians. And th uh, the IDF were given the coordinates for that particular Once school. again, the fact is that particular incident is still under, under investigation and the fact is the UN itself is still investigating that incident. It's not clear. What is clear is that it's made absolutely clear that there were terrorist organizations, Hamas firing from the vicinity of the school. So it is absolutely not clear that the casualties, tragic casualties, were caused by Israel. It's worth remembering that some 10% of Hamas missiles never leave the Gaza Strip. They actually land on their own population. It's an absolutely tragic situation. But your strategy, it's not working, is it? When I, civilians are killed, when this number of civilians are killed, the strategy isn't working. Israel's strategy is not working. Um, the fact is, in a situation, there is no democracy that has found a fail-safe way dealing with brutal terrorist organizations that hide in civilian areas. But as we're talking now, Israel has managed to uncover some 30 terrorist tunnels that run from the Gaza Strip under Israel in an attempt to blow up or kidnap Israelis and manage to decommission them. We estimate that of the 12,000 rockets and missiles that Hamas has in the Gaza Strip, many of them long-range missiles that have been smuggled you in from Iran, have actually been... System, have, have actually the been... The Iron Dome protects uh, Israeli citizens from these rockets, but the people in Gaza, a densely populated area, do not have that level of protection. The, 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 I'm not going to apologise for the fact that more Israelis haven't been killed. The fact is 75% of Israel's population, some 5 million people, have to leave their lives within reach of bomb shells and even Iron Dome doesn't work in every circumstances. But as far as the Gaza Strip is concerned, when you think about the miles and miles of concrete reinforced tunnels, some 20% of the building equipment shipped into Gaza for the purposes of building schools and hospitals, why doesn't at, Hamas allow people to go and protect themselves in these tunnels? of children dying, homes flattened, uh, do, do you need to pause for a second and think we this pause. is not we are working? Ab we are absolutely appalled, but we also have to remember that Hamas, unfortunately, is relying on the world to care about Palestinian civilians more than it does itself. We have one side in this equation which is, causing a, which is committing a double war crime, targeting our civilians, hiding behind their civilians. Is Israel and committing that means, war crimes? Uh, no, well, absolutely not. The if civilians are being killed and the UN uh, has uh, indicated that they're, they're concerned that Israel is uh, committing a war crime. Would you say Israel is then committing no, no, a war crime? Uh, is, Israel is engaging in serious attempts, serious legal advice, working closely with other democracies in how to deal with this. But you have to remember that when a terrorist organization hides from behind civilians, saying that you have carte blanche, saying that you have free range to do anything you like, is simply not an option, not an option for Israel and not an option for any other democracy. The Palestinians would say the same, that uh, Israelis, uh, uh, you know, airstrikes against civilians, airstrikes against UN I don't think, I think the UN schools. I think more and more, and you have to look at public opinion surveys in the Gaza Strip to realize how disappointed people are with the Hamas leadership. They can't speak publicly because they are under threat of gun, they are intimidated. But quietly they realize that Hamas has done nothing to increase the prosperity right of their now, society. Right now the Palestinian people have nowhere to go and rockets are being fired on them uh, day and night. The fact is we are making it absolutely clear. We are taking on additional risk. Israeli soldiers, we're sending ground troops because shooting from the air is more of a risk. We give advance notice of where we are actually going to be attacking to try and... and 
enable people. School is hit. Uh, the fact that if we think about the fact that within the Gaza Strip are 15 to 20,000 Hamas militants with 12,000 missiles, in that situation, to try and limit the amount of damage to the damage that we've done shows that we've been taking extraordinary care in extremely difficult circumstances. Uh, Ambassador, we'll just uh, keep you there for a second because I'd like to bring in Mustafa Baguti, who's a member of the Palestinian Legislative Council and head of the Palestinian National Initiative. He joins me now from Ramallah. We've been speaking to uh, Ambassador Taub here and he is saying that uh, thousands of rockets are, are being fired on Israeli civilians. So what will it take for Hamas to stop these rockets? Yeah, thousands of rockets and nobody is killed. It's a, it's a simple psychological warfare that uh, I, I, I don't want to see. But in reality, Israel is not just uh, not a democracy, as he claims, but Israel is behaving like a fascist country. When they don't recognize the fact that they are killing children and women and continue the propaganda of defending such unacceptable behavior, and when the racism in Israel and among Israeli leadership reaches a point where a member of Knesset, elite, Shakid, stands in the Israeli parliament and says we should kill all Palestinian women so that they would not give birth to Palestinian children who are snakes. But at this, this particular is a time, behavior, the this is a continue. language. When, the sea, when there is a call for a ceasefire, Hamas continues to fire these rockets. No, let me class, uh, uh, explain. And I am aware of all the positions. And I've been talking to them this morning. Hamas and all Palestinian groups are unified in accepting and demanding ceasefire immediately because we want this horrible attack on our people in Gaza to stop. We want this attack that has killed so far 1,034 people. Mainly 90% of them are civilians. And the fact that a person is a civilian, but in, in, at an age that makes, uh, uh, at an age where he can be in the army, does not justify killing him. He's a civilian. We are talking about 6,000 people injured. What will it take for the Palestinians, the Palestinian leadership, to come to the negotiating table so that their people do not continue to experience this level of bloodshed? What we need is Israel's acceptance of two things. First of all, to stop immediately their operation in Gaza, to stop the attack on Gaza, to stop the aggression on Gaza, and to accept to lift the siege <coughs> on the people of Gaza. Because the siege on Gaza is causing the worst humanitarian crisis ever. It has been responsible for the fact that the poverty level is so high. It has, it has been responsible for the fact that 90% of the people cannot have drinkable water, according to international standard. It is responsible for the fact that uh, there is a big sewage problem in Gaza. It is responsible for the and fact the that fishermen cannot fish in the sea. And the tunnels? The tunnels were an act of self-defense. They can all be abolished tomorrow if Israel stops these acts. And let's remember that this is not just about Gaza. Gaza is only a small, tiny problem. Everything started with the West Bank because the whole aggression started by Israel was started in the West Bank. When 27 Palestinians were killed while they were peacefully demonstrating, when Israel conducted an act of collective punishment uh, arresting no less than 1,000 people, including our members of parliament, and the cause of everything is the occupation. There has been an occupation that has been there for 47 years and has transformed into a system of apartheid and segregation. M Mr. Taub, Israel does not Mr. want Taub, to stop occupation. Uh, That's Mr. Taub has said that uh, uh, the people of Palestine are very disappointed in Hamas and the Palestinian leadership. Are you letting your people down by, by not coming and having serious discussions with the Israelis? On the contrary, people are disappointed with Israel, not with Hamas or any other Palestinian political faction. In reality, President Abbas has been conducting negotiations with Israel for 21 years. All he got is more expansion of settlements. All he got is a system of enslavement of our people. Well, he obviously and hasn't Israel been very was the one that broke. Israel was the one that broke negotiations that were conducted by Mr. Kerry. So Israel, Netanyahu is saying the following. He does not want two-state solution. He does not want one-state solution. So what does he want? A system of enslavement, a system of oppression, a system of apartheid. But how we long will, will never, this, ever accept that. How long will this tit-for-tat continue? If Hamas doesn't stop the rockets, uh, Israel will continue with, with its airstrikes. No, no, Hamas aggression. is ready to stop all the rockets. Actually, as I said, these rockets did not, did not kill really people. 
most of the people who were killed on the Israeli side, and I don't want anybody to be killed, but out of the 44 people killed, 42 were soldiers invading Gaza. Soldiers. So if the Iron Dome While wasn't on the Palestinian there, more side, Israelis those who are killed, killed are women and children. If the Iron Dome wasn't there, then more Israelis would get killed. Well, luckily, they were not. And we don't want them to die. But on the other hand, when I see an ambassador of a country that claims to be a democracy, who doesn't care about the fact that 1,033 people have been killed, mostly children and women and civilians, when I see a man who doesn't care about the fact that 30 families were completely eliminated, including the father, the mother, the grandfather, the grandsons, the children, they were all eliminated. When I see a man who doesn't care about the fact that 6,000 people are injured, and he thinks that we are subhuman beings, then this is unacceptable. The fact is that Israeli Mr. propaganda Baguti, is I'll, trying to dehumanize I'll, Palestinians Baguti, to justify I'll, I'll, an oppression just, that is unacceptable. I'll just bring in uh, Ambassador Taub uh, as a right of reply. Um, it's absolutely shocking to hear somebody representing an organization that has deliberately put men, women and children in harm's way to protect its terrorist leaders who are hidden in the basement of hospitals. The fact is if Hamas was to stop firing missiles... Who is missiles, representing even, them? Mr. Baguti, even, you don't know even me. Even I'm not Hamas. We don't want a, a screaming match here, but Mr. Baguti has said no, that No, but don't uh, mislead Hamas, the public. Hamas you know me very well, the and uh, you the can't claim is, that. The fact is Israel five times over the last few weeks has accepted ceasefires, including the Egyptian proposal supported by the this Arab League and suited right. the you, United you Nations. If you accept ceasefire, why did you ask the United States humanitarian windows. We've seen Hamas ceasefire. continuing to fire rockets and celebrate the death of Israeli civilians, which of course is something that no Israeli would ever do. It's not true because those who are dying are Palestinian civilians, not Israeli civilians, and you cannot mislead the world anymore. The world already knows the facts and the reality. You cannot continue to mislead the world about the fact that you are occupying another people and oppressing them, and this cannot continue. We need our freedom and we are entitled to it.